this wild hooligan singing, dancing. It's, it's shameless, disgusting. What has caused you to act like this? It was the absolute fun and deliciousness of a Krabby Patty. We've got a very sad episode coming up next. It's banned in Bikini Bottom. And this episode is all about Krabby Patties literally becoming banned in Bikini Bottom, which is just insane. What is Bubble Bass gonna do? You know Mr. Krabs was stressing. But anyways, this episode has two mistakes. Here's the first one. Try to comment the mistake before I reveal it. I wanna see if you guys can spot it before I show you what it is. But yeah, roll the footage. Hello, and welcome one and all your money to ye old Krusty Krabby. Greetings. Okay, so let's take a look at the front of the Krusty Krab from the outside, all right? We'll take a look at it from the first ever episode of SpongeBob. And you'll notice that the doors of the Krusty Krab, the handles on them, have always been yellow ever since the first episode. And hey, here's a shot from another episode. You'll notice that they're yellow. And yo, just so you guys know I'm not capping, here's another shot from another episode of the front of the Krusty Krab, and those doorknobs or handles are yellow. But for some reason in this episode, it never happened happens again after this and never happened before this when Mr. Krabs greets Mrs. Grusselpus, the Krusty Krab door handles are blue instead of yellow. What? Mistakes happen sometimes, but this is like a weird one. They just colored the handles a completely different color. And like I said, this has never happened before. A lot of these other mistakes we cover sometimes happen fairly often, like the chum bucket missing from across the street, but this is just a weird one. And here's the other mistake from this episode, gang. Take a look at this. It is close. This Grusselpus and her husband banned Krabby Patties for being fun and delicious. My day of reckoning has come at, at last! I've won, I tell you! I've won! Speaking of the chum bucket missing, we have a mistake just like that in this episode, but it's different for once. So, when Plankton looks out his window to see the Krusty Krab, we know that the chum bucket's there because he's looking from the chum bucket. The road that normally follows up to the chum bucket's door is missing. This road right here, here's another shot from another episode. This road that should be right here is missing in this shot from the episode Band of Bikini Bottom, which isn't a big deal, but it's still a mistake. Like, that path is always there. They can't just decide it's not there anymore. Weird mistake. Let's keep it moving though, guys, and head over to another episode with spicy mistakes. Lots of good stuff coming up, guys, and it's going to get worse as we go. In the episode Krusty Dogs, Krusty Krabs are replaced with hot dogs, which is just wild, but not as wild as the mistake in this episode. Take a look at this. Um, excuse me, Mr. Krabs. Uh, well, where are you going with that ladder? Mr. Krabs? I'm just going to make a few changes to the Krusty Krab menu, that's all. No more Krabby Patties. <laughs> So as you guys just saw, a big part of this episode is that Mr. Krabs crosses the Krabby Patty off of the menu, like insane. So insane that an ambulance literally comes. Now maybe you guys caught this one on your own, but if you didn't, Cartoon Cory's got you covered. But normally in the Krusty Krab, there is this workstation area with the cash register that Squidward always works in, this boat right here. Squidward's workstation is just completely missing. It should be right here, but they just forgot to draw it during this one scene, which is kind of hilarious. Here's another one from this episode. I'll make it quick. Um, excuse me, Mr. Krabs. Uh, well, where are you going with that ladder? Mr. Krabs? I'm just going to make a few changes to the Krusty Krab menu, that's all. <laughs> Yeah, okay, this one's funny. So Krabby Patties, right? They're not sold at the Krusty Krab anymore. Well then why in this scene that takes place after they're removed, is there a fish behind SpongeBob still eating a Krabby Patty when they're supposed to be gone? Not that big of a deal, but still technically a mistake. And guys, we've got more. Here's another episode. Oh, whatever will I donate to the time capsule? Golly, this is hard. How about <gasps> this lamb? It's perfect. Wow, you're good. How did you know all that? Are you like a psychic? Oh, 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 tell me what I'm thinking. Next. Our next mistake can be found in the episode Buried in Time, which is all about the Krusty Krab making like a time capsule. The episode's really funny. Take a look at the beginning here and then we're gonna get into the mistakes. Empty. I thought I'd never see the day. 
Use on or before the date printed below. Oh, this can has been here for 50 years! This should be in a museum for future generations to enjoy. Hmm. Future generations, huh? That's right. In 50 years, your donated treasures will be unearthed for future generations to enjoy. Okay, it's mistake time. Here's the first one. Tell me, what do you know about this plate? Uh, it works good when I eat stuff. Now, with your permission, I'd like to perform... Form a few tests to verify its authenticity. So as you guys just saw, there is one fish who brings plates to put in the time capsule, all right? And for about a frame, if you look, his eyes briefly disappear for a frame. They come back, but I mean, come on, man. They should be there the whole time. Here's mistake number two. Get to the Krusty Krab Time Capsule Spectacular! And there's your commemorative time capsule keychain. And thanks so much for all your contributions! So throughout the scenes where the fish are putting things inside of the capsule, we can see this red ribbon which runs from the stand to the Krusty Krab right here. But throughout this scene, it actually just disappears and reappears. Just totally messy. And let's head over to another episode, guys. The mistakes in this episode we just covered are alright, but this is where things get wild. Be prepared. Could you hand me that wrench, SpongeBob? Nah, uh uh Lab partner. Huh? You called me SpongeBob. I thought we agreed to address each other by our proper titles. SpongeBob! Uh, th 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 lab partner. <laughs> We're gonna make this next one quick. The mistake can be found in the episode Perfect Chemistry. Take a look at this. Hey, cut it out! Plankton, is that you? Of course it's me, you moron. Interesting. Did you guys catch it? So, Plankton should be wearing something. As you guys know, Plankton is a sea creature. He needs water, but he's in Sandy's tree dome, which has no water. It's just air in there. So, Plankton not having a water helmet is a major mistake here. The dude would, like, die. I hate to say it, but he'd literally die. So, yeah, major mistake here. Here's another episode. Who's been in Bikini Bottom for as long as Mr. Krabs? Ow! Mm. No! Hi, Plankton! This next one has very few mistakes, but the one it has is actually really bad, so I'm gonna make it quick. The episode is The Main Drain, a very underrated episode. Like, be honest, have you even heard of this episode before? I definitely had not before this video, but anyways, here's the first mistake. Let's expose it. One sec. Time for a scary story, boys. Again. Where is the main drain, Mr. Krabs? Did you guys catch it? It's a very weird one. But when Mr. Krabs turns off the lights, it's on the left side, as you can see right here. However, when Mr. Krabs eventually finishes the story moments later, the switch suddenly just changes positions. Like, what? The animators definitely forgot about where they originally put the light. But hey, stuff happens, all right? Mistakes happen sometimes. At least this one gives us a good laugh. I don't know if it's as funny as this next episode's mistakes, though. Let's keep it moving and stay tuned, guys. Things are only gonna get worse as we go. Oh, you mean this eye for us to share. Oops. Uh... Coming in hot, we've got a classic episode, Dying for Pie. This episode is all about Squidward getting Spongebob a pie that turns out to be a bomb. This dude nearly killed Spongebob. It's a good episode, so I really hate to call it out for having mistakes. There's only one we're gonna be talking about today though anyways, and here's a hint, it has to do with music or like audio. All right, roll the footage. To be fair, you kind of have to understand music to get this one, but in the beginning scene where Squidward plays the piano, the note that he plays makes the sound of a D. I know this because I personally do music. That sound is definitely a D. As a matter of fact, here's a D sound effect. And yeah, you know they're the same now, but if you actually look, Squidward is animated to be pressing an F note, which sounds like this. So not a crazy mistake here, but still technically a mistake. That's not the right note. I'm nitpicking though, and let's keep it moving over to some real mistakes. These next mistakes are really gonna blow your brain. Wow, what happened to the Krusty Krab? Good morning! The Krusty 
Dusty Towers is now open for business. Coming in hot is an episode that I really like. It's Krusty Towers. In this episode, Mr. Krabs converts the Krusty Krab, a fast food restaurant, into like a hotel, and he goes all out. Look at this thing. It's a pretty nice hotel. We should go stay there, you know? Take a nice little trip over to Bikini Bottom, a nice little flight. Now, there's two mistakes in this episode. I'll admit the first one isn't the craziest. It's still a bad mistake, but the second one, that's, that's where things are questionable. But yeah, here's the first mistake from Krusty Towers. Take a look at this. Imagine how much I can charge for a lousy Krabby Patty, and thus the Krusty Towers was born. Like I said, this one isn't too crazy, and it's a classic mistake. This happens all the time, but canonically, all right, the Chum Bucket and Krusty Krab are directly across from one another. This has been shown in so many episodes. I have footage on screen right here as an example, and the writers for Krusty Towers or the animators must have forgotten about this, as whenever the outside of the Krusty Towers is shown, which by the way is the Krusty Krab, the crossroad that should be connecting the Krusty Krab to the Chum Bucket is just missing. Where is it? The path should be right here, but it's not there. Maybe Mr. Krabs got it removed when he converted the restaurant into the hotel, but I doubt it. I think this was just a little, a little oopsies, a little mistake, all right? And here's another one from Krusty Towers. This one's interesting. Close enough. Here's your room key. Take Patrick and his bags to his room. I don't have to rent you a room. I've got cash. Go! Here's your room key. Spongebob. carry my things to my room. Let's dive into this second mistake. Maybe you guys caught it, maybe you didn't, but let me explain. So, despite Squidward and Patrick both getting a room key for Mr. Krabs, they get a key, this bulletin board right here that has all of the keys on it stays the same, which might not sound like a mistake, but for example, here's the bulletin board before they get their keys with all the keys on it, meaning that when Squidward and Patrick got a key, there should be two keys like taken away from this bulletin board, which they didn't do, which I'm not even gonna call lazy, I mean, I'm just being like a nerd by nitpicking this, but I mean, come on. If Squidward and Patrick took keys from this bulletin board, the bulletin board would have two less keys. It just makes sense, but it's a cartoon and it's not that big of a deal. But let's head over to another episode that actually has some blatant errors. Like these mistakes coming up are massive. What are those things? See? Elks, a pernicious form of sea snail, have invaded Bikini Bottom and are on the attack, devouring innocent citizens and covering the city with purple slime. This one I'm going to make insanely quick because we've covered a similar one already today, but in the episode Welk Attack, this happens. Krabby Patties! Get your Krabby Patties! Try a nice hot Krabby Patty. Only $3.99 each. <laughs> be $54.95. I will not be surprised if you guys did not catch it, but as Mr. Krabs is coming out with the plate full of Krabby Patties, and he exits the Krusty Krab with the doors behind him, if we look closely through the windows to the inside of the Krusty Krab, we can see that Squidward's cash register station is missing again. We know this because of the order window. We should be able to see the boat that Squidward is normally in right below that order window, but it's not there. And I'm definitely overanalyzing this because it's a kid's cartoon and it's not that big of a deal. But let's keep on overanalyzing and head over to another episode and find more mistakes. But actually, first, it's time for the, the random, random mistake, mistake of the, of the day, day, where we take a very quick break from Spongebob. Don't worry, we're gonna go right back to Spongebob to expose a mistake in a random cartoon. Again, though, we're gonna go right back to Spongebob, but for now, let's talk about Fairly Odd Parents, another Nickelodeon banger. The mistake can be found in the episode Power Mad, and it has to do with the character Chester. Here's a little hint. We're showing Chester on screen. Remember his hair color. All right, let's see if you guys can catch this mistake. Roll the clip. Guys, wait! We really need to stop playing! Why? Uh, I have to go? No, you don't. You just win at 613. So you guys probably caught it, especially with the hint I gave you, but if you didn't, Cartoon Cory's got you covered. So let's take a look at Chester right here, and we'll notice that his hair is blonde, all right? And even when they go into, like, virtual reality in this episode, his hair turns to, like, this pinkish color. But his hair is not black. So why during this scene are his eyebrows or eyelashes black? They should be blonde. So this is totally a mistake, and let's get back to SpongeBob. Do let me know in the comments the 
guys what other cartoons you want me to cover for the random mistake of the day. But yeah, back to SpongeBob. And why are you sweating so much? And why do you look so hungry? And No, no, wait, it's not what you think. This is a big misunderstanding. You've got to believe me. I Listen, I am telling you, you better listen to me, SpongeBob! You like Krabby Patties, don't you, Squidward? Next up, we've got some season three goodness. One of my favorite season three episodes, Just One Bite. In this episode, Squidward is exposed for loving Krabby Patties after he tries to lie and claim he doesn't like them. You're so fake, Squidward. Like seriously, look at this compilation of this boy lying about not liking Krabby Patties. He lies so much in this episode. And then of course, we're gonna get into the mistakes. They're really bad in this episode, so stay tuned. Horrible, putrid, poorly prepared, vile, unappetizing, disgusting excuse for a sandwich. It has ever been my displeasure to have slithered down my throat. I'm not gonna sneak one, just one. Then I'm off the stuff for good. It's hilarious because by the end of the episode, the dude explodes from eating so many Krabby Patties. But anyways, here's the first mistake, guys. Let's expose it. Uh, um, um. I gotta have more. I gotta have more. <laughs> this one's a really bad mistake and it happens towards the ending of the episode when Squidward gets caught and says the line, I gotta have more. He is jonesing for Krabby Patties, holy. When Squidward says this, look, his mouth disappears for like a split second, leaving for a really, really weird shot of Squidward. This also happens again when Squidward turns around before the scene and says SpongeBob. Yeah, same thing, his mouth disappears for like a split second, which is definitely a mistake. And I feel bad for Squidward because he's gonna need his mouth to eat all those Krabby Patties. So yeah, here's another mistake from this episode. This one's just as bad. Yes! Yes! I admit it, SpongeBob! I love Krabby Patties! I knew it all along, Squidward. No one can resist a Krabby Patty. It happens around the same time as the last one, but for about a split second during his lines, one of his pores or holes just turns blue. Like, what is going on here, SpongeBob? That is not supposed to be blue, what? I can tell you what the issue is here. It's an animation error. If you look behind SpongeBob, the patty vault is blue. So for whatever reason, the layer of his pores, they're like clipping through and showing the blue wall behind it, which, you know, is definitely a mistake. Mistakes happen, but this one's kind of rough. I don't know how they missed it. I don't know how they missed this one either. Here's one more from Just One Bite, and then we'll head over to another episode, guys. Lots of other episodes coming up. Triple Krabby Supreme! Triple Krabby Supreme! Did somebody order a Triple Krabby Supreme? Oh, they must have left. I'm gonna make this one quick because it's a very typical SpongeBob error. Don't worry, there's lots of crazier ones coming up. But in the scenes where Incidental 40 is enjoying his king size Ultra Krabby Supreme, I want one, the chum bucket, which should be across from the street, is just missing. Here's a shot showing that normally it is across the street, there's a path between them. But in this episode, just one bite, the chum bucket just doesn't exist anymore, I guess. The animators just forgot that it's supposed to be across the street. Crazy. Let's keep it going though, guys. I'm saving the best mistakes for the end. Wow, what is this place? Look at all this cool stuff! <laughs> I'm the captain! This next one takes place in the episode The Wreck of the Moa Loa, and it's right at the very end of the episode. Roll the clip. was awesome! This one only happens for a split second, so I can't really blame anybody for missing it, but when SpongeBob and Patrick laugh after their ride gets destroyed, like I said, for a split second, SpongeBob's mouth is gone. <laughs> like, what? How do you forget to draw this dude's mouth? It's only for a split second, though, so I, I guess I'll give him a break. It's probably a glitch. But weird mistake, dude, and we've got plenty of more that are even more weird. How could life in Bikini Bottom possibly get any worse? My bikini bottom's erupting! That's how cool. Next up is another very underrated episode of SpongeBob, Sponge Kano. Here, take a look for yourself. We're gonna get into the mistakes, but here are a couple clips from this episode just summarizing it. And then, like I said, we're gonna expose the mistakes, so stay tuned. Cause being your neighbor leaves me with nothing to be grateful for. Ah! 
Wow, Squidward, you should really consider getting your plumbing looked at. What are you boys doing out still? Plenty of room at the volcano shelter. Hey, but no more roughhousing. You got that? Oh, yes, of course, ma'am. Try and behave yourself, fellers. All right, it's my steak time, baby. Let's go. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> huh? If you're a true SpongeBob fan, you already caught this one. It's very blatant if you understand SpongeBob. So, as Squidward is falling down into the volcano, rest in peace, dude, he's only drawn with two legs instead of four, which is totally a mistake. Squidward does not only have two legs. If we even go back to, for example, Culture Shock, right, and Squidward does his iconic dance, look, he does not only have two legs, so totally a mistake here. This is a really bad mistake if you really think about it. So much so that I don't even want to talk about this episode anymore dude like you let's keep it moving it's time for the random, random mistake, mistake of the, of the day, day where we take a very quick break from spongebob to talk about a random cartoon and a random mistake from that cartoon today we're doing amphibia and for context the mistake has to do with this character annie it's in the very first episode of amphibia annie or beast and it has to do with annie's outfit all right let's see if you guys can spot a mistake from a show some of you might have never even seen before roll the clip <laughs> Oh, here we go. <laughs> like I said, it has to do with Annie's outfit. And as you guys just saw in the clip, when Annie leaps to start sliding into the log with Sprig, if we watch very closely for a frame, this school logo that's normally on her shirt disappears for a frame. It comes back after, of course, and it's on her before this, but for that one frame, it's missing, and that, my friend, is a mistake. Now, though, let's get back to what you guys clicked on, SpongeBob SquarePants. Today we'll be discussing the differences between a driver with boat smarts and a driver without boat smarts. Hey Squidward! Look what I can do with my feet! The episode Boat Smarts is kind of a weird episode. It isn't a regular one. It's pretty much like a safety documentary by Mrs. Puff that stars SpongeBob and Squidward in it. And it's actually like a really good episode in my opinion. It's short but sweet. Of course though, you guys know what's coming. I'm gonna ruin this episode. It has some mistakes. Here's the first one. Notice how he comes gently to a stop sign. What's our boat smarts boater up to now? He's adjusting his mirror. Hey, yo it's kind of funny, but at the beginning of this episode, Squidward, he's in his boat, and his boat has no mirrors, okay? We're looking at this boat, there's no mirrors on this boat. But then, as the episode progresses, and I want to make it clear, Squidward is in the same boat as the beginning of the episode, this one mirror just randomly appears on the left side. It wasn't there before, and to make things worse, when he starts driving, he now randomly has two mirrors. Again, we go back to the beginning of the episode, he had none, and it's the same boat. And then, guys, believe it or not, later on in the episode, all of the mirrors just disappear again. So it went no mirrors, then one mirror, then two mirrors, and now no mirrors again. This is a very, very messy mistake realistically. And yeah, this one's pretty bad. My great great grandpappy crabs invented the greatest thing since loose change, the spendthrift billfold system. Allow me to demonstrate. Hey, SpongeBob, how about a raise? Gee, thanks, Mr. Krabs. Uh, uh, uh. Watch. <laughs> See? Doesn't that hurt? Every time! Up next, we have Pest in the West. This is a really special episode. I mean, it's literally a SpongeBob special, meaning it's longer than normal, but it's all about us going back in time to the Western days of Bikini Bottom, before SpongeBob, Patrick, or anyone was born, and it focuses on SpongeBob. This guy right here, who looks exactly like SpongeBob, but he's a cowboy. Everybody's a cowboy in this episode. It's pretty fun. What isn't so fun, though, are the mistakes in this episode. They're actually really bad in this one. Here's the first one. So I'll go back to that I gulch, whoop plankton, and save the town at high noon. Hop on, buddy. Thanks, idiot friend. Ah! Howdy, guys. I'm back in the nick of time. So, throughout a majority of this episode, like 70% of the episode, Spongebob here, who isn't Spongebob and is from the past, is always seen wearing these black cowboy boots, alright? Black cowboy boots because shoes, like running shoes, were not invented yet. Most likely, at least. I mean, I highly doubt that back in like the 1800s, people were walking around in Jordans and Yeezys, you know what I mean? So, yeah, the black boots make sense for this episode. But then, randomly, at that 70% point, I guess the animators forgot about the boots because from 
they are on out, SpongeBob is just randomly wearing his like modern day socks and shoes. And it stays like that for the remainder of the episode. I get it, this is part of SpongeBob's design, but this is Sponge Buck. And again, we're like years in the past, so running shoes wouldn't really be a thing yet. So this is actually like a really bad mistake if you think about it. It's like the animators completely forgot about the boots. But anyways, I'm rambling, I'm talking all this smack. Here's another mistake from this episode. Lived under the tyranny of a nasty crook. Well, time to make my fortune. Back in them days, the whole place was run by that no good glute dead eye. And stay out! Dead eye won't stop till he has the clothes off our backs. I'll own every building in town, and you'll all have to work for me the rest of your miserable lives. This one's a little more complicated, but the buildings in Dead Eye Gulch, which is like the town this episode takes place in, are constantly changing throughout the episode. The Krusty Cantina and the bank are mostly the same throughout the whole episode, but some buildings change color and name the Dead Eye General Store, which you can see right here. Here's a wide out shot too, so you can see where its position is in Dead Eye Gulch. It's right there. As the episode progresses, it just randomly turns into Dead Eye Boots, a completely different store in this shot right here. Like, what's going on? This was totally a mistake. My dog's barking. He says hi. I'm not going to show you guys all of them, but how about this? Watch that scene back and let me know in the comments all of the changes. Let me know, all right? For now, though, let's head over to another episode. Let's go, gang. Let's do it. And my favorite is the plaintive song of the blue whale. Ahem. <clears throat> huh? Did you hear that? Well, what's wrong, Frank? That song. It sounds just like Martha. Frank, how many times do I have to tell you? Martha's no good for you. She's just no good. This one is hilarious. It's from the episode You Don't Know Sponge, and it has to do with our boy Larry's shorts. Watch this. And he's hanging out with Larry the Lobster? Maybe I don't know much about Patrick either. You guys probably caught it, but Larry over here, when he first enters the store, is wearing his signature swim trunks, all right? I want to go swimming now. But as he approaches this blender, if we look closely and zoom in on his shorts that are behind the table, they're just randomly black. The animators just completely forgot to give him color. Does it look funny? Yes. Is it a mistake? Also, yes. And here's another one from this episode. Patrick didn't know anything about you, and he's supposed to be your best friend. I know. It's like we're not friends at all. <laughs> now, now, Patrick may not have passed the quiz, but like a true best friend, he's always right here for me, right? Pa Patrick? Patrick? So, when SpongeBob says the line you guys just heard, now, now, Patrick may not have passed the quiz, look, their legs are missing. Their legs are just not there. It's kind of a weird angle. I can understand why they didn't draw them, but they're gone. Crazy how many mistakes there are in SpongeBob, man. It's like endless. So, let's keep it moving. Another episode, baby. Let's go. I'll be returning to my grown up lifestyle. So, keep it down! <laughs> Squidward! Let's do another quick one from the episode Squid Bait. Let's get right into it. Here's the first mistake. <laughs> you have to work on your penmanship, Squiddy. <laughs> my face! My face! Also my leg, but mostly my face! This one's definitely going to need some explaining. This character right here is Incidental 106, and he's colored like this. Remember these colors, all right? This right here is Incidental 107, and he's colored like this. After Baby Squidward scribbles all over Incidental 41's face, we get a shot of Incidental 106, but this time he's colored incorrectly. For some reason, they made a mess up, and they swapped Incidental 106 with Incidental 107's colors. What? Here's another mistake from Squid Baby. This one's interesting. <laughs> we may have covered this one before, so I'm going to make it very, very quick. But when SpongeBob and Patrick yell, Squiddy, not only is SpongeBob missing his arms, which might be more of a comedic effect, but a piece of his bottom is missing at the bottom of the screen. This is definitely a mistake. You can see the animation glitches and it's just cut off or something. Really, really weird. We ain't done yet though, guys. Let's head over to another episode. So many mistakes in today's video. Sam! 
Next up, we have the episode Big Sister Sam, where we're introduced to Patrick's not so pretty or cute sister. Like, this girl is angry, dude. But anyways, we're here for mistakes, and this episode has quite a few. Here's the first one. Make new house spiffy. <laughs> More spiffy. Come on, sis. They can't bother us under our rock. Did you guys catch that? It has to do with the doorknob on Squidward's house, all right? So when Sam spiffs up the house, she adds the front door from Squidward's house, all right? You can see it right here. And at first, when we see it, the doorknob is on the right. Remember this, all right? The doorknob's on the right. However, though, in a few scenes later, it's now magically on the left. Here's a side-by-side. -side. At first, it was on the right, and now randomly, it is on the left. What a weird mistake. And here's another one. Have much ketchup to do. <laughs> wow, I cleaned my rock just for you. <laughs> hey, let's go inside and play. So this one's weird, it needs some explaining, all right? So, when Sam throws her brother Patrick, poor Patrick, dude, like, she really throws him, and he lands on his rock, if we look, Patrick's rock is to the right of the screen, all right? It's right here on the right side. Now, the problem is seconds later, when Sam goes over to Patrick's rock, they travel to the left side of the screen, when we literally just seen that the rock is on the right side. So technically a mistake, this one's kinda weird. There's gonna be a lot crazier mistakes coming up, guys, that are actually really bad, so let's keep it moving. And do it. You made the commitment, you'll have to honor them. Both of them. Our first mistake can be found in the episode Overbooked, which is like a really underrated episode of SpongeBob. It has two mistakes, here's the first one, roll that footage. <laughs> You finally made it! Uh, uh, yeah, big traffic storm. Just leave my present over on the present table. <laughs> Did you guys catch it? Come on, Grapple Gang, I know you guys caught it. If you didn't though, I gotcha, don't worry. But take a look at Patrick's party hat, all right? When his rock first opens, his party hat is red. Remember this. As in the very next scene, like seconds later, his party hat now changes to like purple, making for a subtle, but I mean, come on, that's a continuity error right there. Here's a side-by-side. -side. First it was like red, then it randomly changes to purple, and he did not change his hat. This all happens in a matter of seconds. So definitely a mistake. But I'll let it slide. You know, it ain't that big of a deal. Here's another one from Overbooked, though. You already forgot one thing. Have I? My birthday cake! Oh, yeah! Not that! I was I'm just getting to that! Get your birthday cake. You're hilarious, Star. You really are. Yeah, this one's like really, really bad, but before Spongebob walks away to go and get a cake, now I want cake. What's your guys' favorite flavor of cake? Let me know in the comments. If we watch closely, his left leg turns like white for a split second. The whole thing is white. When obviously, as you can see in this PNG, our boy Spongebob's leg is supposed to be yellow. His socks are white, so I think that's what happened here. Either way, it's still a mistake, and here's more from another episode, guys. Things are gonna get crazier as we go. Nothing like a little manual labor to put some hair on your chest, hey, Patrick? I'll say. <laughs> Plus, look at what we unearthed! A UFO! First up, we have an episode that I don't think I've ever covered before at all. I could be wrong. The episode's 20,000 Patties Under the Sea. And dude, it's actually a really good episode. I feel bad for missing this one. I did find a couple of mistakes, though. Sorry, guys, we gotta ruin that childhood today. Here's the first one. Let's see if you guys can spot it. Uh, Robert, Robert! Uh. Ronald, Ronald, Ryan. Are you sure you're not trying to say Roger? Oh wait, I got it, I got it! Ringo. Patrick, we have visual contact. This one's very, very funny. It cracked me up a little bit, but take a look at SpongeBob's glasses at first, all right? They look like this, more specifically the lens, look like this. At first, they're not like fully circles. They're like a bit of a circle with the top being cut off with a line, as you can see here. But then later on, they just become these, where like the lens are just entire circles, which is most likely to represent his eyes being full. But here's a side-by-side. -side. Those look like completely different pairs of glasses because of this, so totally a mistake here. I see what they were going for. This wasn't meant to be a mistake, but yeah, it's totally a mistake. Sorry, Nickelodeon, get wrecked. And here's another one from the same episode. There's a jellyfish over here, and I'm worried it might sting me if I make any loud <gasps> noises. 
Oops. Is he still after? Patrick. <laughs> I don't know, buddy. Come on, Grapple Gang. I know you guys got that one. If you didn't, though, Cartoon Cory's got you covered. But as SpongeBob and Patrick are running away from the jellyfish, look at SpongeBob's left shirt sleeve as boom. The animators just completely forgot to color it in. It only happens for like a split second. It's just not colored in, and it looks ridiculous. Big mistake here, and here's another one from the same episode. Shall we turn around and check? Okay! <laughs> Patrick, look! There's a weird thing sticking out of the ground right there! Well, that's just Squidward sunbathing again. No, not that, Patrick. This! We can dig it up! We? Okay, last one from this episode, and then we're gonna get into another episode with even spicier mistakes, but this submarine right here, we can see that it's stuck in the ground, and at one point, there's like this short distance between the grass in jellyfish fields, remember this, to the submarine that's stuck in the ground. As later on, when we get this shot or this scene, where is that grass? It should be over here by the submarine stuck in the ground, but it's like at first they drew the grass close by, but then forgot about this, and then when they got to this scene, they drew it without any grass, which is just kind of weird. Not as weird as the mistakes in this next episode, guys. Let's keep it moving. You're not going to believe what's coming up. Our ghostly pirates! <laughs> All laboratory creatures. SpongeBob! <laughs> Our green being from another planet. Okay, SpongeBob, okay! Our bus drivers! Yeah, that's enough! All right, Grapple Gang, it's time to take a trip down the Tunnel of Glove. This episode has quite a few mistakes, so let's get right into them. Here's the first one. Well, I don't think this is the Tunnel of Glove. It's the Tunnel of Evil! <laughs> this one's very weird. So in the Hall of Great Romance, the scene you guys just saw, there's this robot right here with a green dress. Now, the dress covers its legs and feet. Remember this. However, when it eventually walks towards Pearl and SpongeBob, look, the dress is just kind of weird now and shows the feet instead of covering it. It's like the dress's design has changed some way and then it's like this for the rest of the episode. Isn't 100% a mistake, but y'all know that that's very weird. And here's one that's actually a mistake for sure. Roll the footage. She's gonna blow! No! So at the ending of the episode, the Tunnel of Glove explodes, all right? And when this happens, SpongeBob and Pearl are in this boat right here. And you can see on the back that this boat has this little like flag on the back of it, all right? It's right here, remember this flag. Now eventually they go in water and when the boat crashes, you can see that the flag is kind of wet right here. But then as the scene progresses, that flag eventually just disappears. Take a look at this shot of the boat. A flag should be right there, but it's just gone now. Literally no one removed it. So it seems that the animators forgot got to draw the flag in these shots. All right, now I will admit the two mistakes we just covered are kind of weak, so let's head over to another episode and cover something spicy. 108, 109, 110. That's it, Sandy, you did it! Yee <laughs> Let's get things started with the episode Squirrel Record. This is from the modern SpongeBob era, so the episode's all fancy in HD, and it has two mistakes. Let's not waste any time. Here's the first one. SpongeBob, I need photographic proof of my amazing deeds. I'll go get the camera. Well, hurry up! <laughs> Oh my. So, as you guys just saw, SpongeBob leaves to go and get his camera. But when he does this, he leaves his helmet inside the tree dome. But once he's shown running back with his camera, he's randomly seen with his helmet on again outside of the tree dome, which literally would have been impossible because he left his helmet there when he left. Maybe he has an extra one, but I think the animators messed up here and they were not supposed to draw him with the helmet on again. What do you guys think, though? Let me know in the comments below. For now, though, here's another mistake from this episode. We're all in this together. Ah! 
let's have a look. SpongeBob! Oh, hey, Sammy. <laughs> SpongeBob, what are you doing? Yeah, so speaking of that water helmet, all right, if we go back to Tea at the Tree Dome, we know that if SpongeBob does not have water, this happens. He starts to dry up and he pretty much nearly dies. But for some reason, after SpongeBob is crushed by the machine and the clips you guys just saw, he is now randomly somehow able to survive inside Sandy's Tree Dome without wearing a water helmet. I guess whoever wrote this episode or whoever animated squirrel record must have forgotten about this very crucial detail. But anyways, we can't spend all day on this episode. Let's head over to another one, guys, that has much crazier mistakes. Stay tuned. Howdy, SpongeBob! You're right on time to help me test out my new disappearator. It'll make anything disappear instantly. Now hold still, and I'll just shave a few inches off in the top of your noggin. Oh, I certainly said... No can do, you brainless lab rat! Next up, we've got the abrasive side. This episode's pretty interesting. It's all about SpongeBob realizing that he's too nice, so like an actual sponge, he switches to the green side. He switches to his abrasive side. Now, we're gonna get into the mistakes of this episode as it has a ton of them, but first, here are some hilarious clips from this episode, and then we'll get right to the mistakes. SpongeBob, would you help your granny cross the street? <laughs> Sorry, Granny. Why don't you walk yourself across the street? I need you to work an extra 17-hour shift tonight. Oh, sure thing, Mr. Sorry, Krabs, I'm busy. Unless you're paying me overtime. Overtime? Yeah, so this is a really good episode. In terms of season seven, like this is up there as a really good episode. Even good episodes, though, have mistakes. Here's the first one. Hey, SpongeBob! You're right on time for our play date! Woo! I can't wait to ditch you! You're my best friend! Beat it, Tubby. I don't care for your company. Did you guys catch it? Because this one's really bad. It's only for a split second, so I get it if you guys didn't. But at one point, when SpongeBob is talking to Patrick, it happens for a frame, but look at one of his eyes. As part of his blue eye turns, like, red for a split second. Like, what? And I'm gonna be honest with you, I have no idea how this mistake would have happened. It can't be a layering issue, but whatever. Here's mistake number two. You. Now turn around and grab something heavy. Now hold still. Oh, you don't scare me, girly. This is gonna sting worse than a jellyfish in a bucket of electric eels. This one's really, really easy to miss, but when Sandy rolls up the sleeves on her suit, there is weirdly black hair on her arms, even though she already has fur. Think about that for a second. Weird. Here's mistake number three. Sorry, Krabs, I'm busy. Unless you're paying me overtime. Overtime? Oh, oh, overtime? More money per hour. More money. Your savings above and beyond. Okay, this one is really, really, really funny. At one point, as you guys saw, we go into a dictionary in this episode, and we can see the definition for multiple words, obviously. Now, when the dictionary is open, you'll notice that the word more is missing from the definition of overkill. In the episode, it reads as the process of doing than a situation requires, when it's obviously supposed to say the process of doing more than a situation requires. Also, in the same scene, you'll notice that the side of the entire dictionary is like incomplete, it like cuts off here. Anyways though, there's actually more mistakes in this episode. Here's another one. You're right on time to help me test out my new disappearator. No can do, you brainless lab rat. As you guys know, Sandy wears a helmet, a glass helmet that nothing should be able to go through because it's glass, duh. But when this thing hits Sandy, it somehow just goes through her helmet. It glitches and goes through her helmet when it shouldn't be able to do that because it's a glass helmet. Crazy, dude. What is this? 
You're making me pay you to stand at the cash register? Well, I am not paying that cheapskate crab one cent. We've got to unite as workers and demand the respect we deserve from the boss. You and I should go on strike. Next up, we have another classic. I'm talking about Squid on Strike, a season two banger. This is the era of SpongeBob that I just love. Now, this episode has like three mistakes we're gonna dive into, and they're really bad, guys. They're worse than any mistakes we've talked about today already. But because the episode's so funny, why not? Here are a couple of funny clips, and then we're gonna get right into those bad mistakes. Now we're gonna make picket signs. Like this, Squidward? Not a picket fence, you ding dong. How's this? No. This is a picket sign. Short, sweet, and to the point. And me and Squidward are gonna stay on strike until we get what we deserve, even if it takes forever! On strike with SpongeBob forever? Hey, Squidward, I bet old man Krabs is gonna break any day. Yeah, Squidward. Yeah, Squidward. Yeah, Squidward. I gotta beg Mr. Krabs for my job back. All right, it's mistake time, baby. I feel bad exposing mistakes in such a good episode, but here's the first one. Keep those eyes peeled, Grapple Gang, and hopefully you guys can catch it. Yeah, Squidward. Yeah, Squidward. Yeah. Squidward. I gotta beg Mr. Krabs for my job back. Did you guys catch it? It has to do with the sign Squidward's holding. So, as you guys just saw, Squidward imagines himself as like an old man, all right? And at first in this, you know, imagination scene, it doesn't actually happen. It's Squidward's imagination. His imagination. Imagination. His sign reads, Krusty still unfair. All right, remember, Krusty still unfair. But seconds later, in the same like imagination scene, when SpongeBob starts orbiting around Squidward, it now randomly reads, Krabs still unfair. Here's a side-by-side. -side. First it said, Krusty, as in Krusty Krabs, is still unfair. And then it just changes to, Krabs still unfair. So, totally a mistake here. And here's another one from the same episode. He will dismantle oppression board by board. Wow, all this supporting is making me hungry. <laughs> Nobody gives a care about the fate of labor as long as they can get their instant gratification. So first things first, let's take a look at Squidward's dance from the episode Culture Shock. I always use this as a good reference because it shows exactly how many limbs Squidward has. And you'll see he has four legs, all right, four legs. Well, in Squid on Strike, after Squidward gets nearly killed by a crowd of people and is run over, look, he only has three legs. And this is a massive mistake when he should have four. Okay, one more from this episode. There's so many in it. I can't wait in the future to do a whole video on this one episode, but here's our third mistake, and then we'll head over to another banger episode. Roll the footage. I'm glad you saw it our way, Mr. Krabs. Now I can fire them teenagers and get me two golden boys back. SpongeBob, what have you done? I dismantled the establishment. Now we'll get our job back for sure. This one's funny. So Mr. Krabs has a very unique walking cycle where he kind of his like stubby legs kind of like pat back and forth. It's like buh, 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 buh. here's an example of it. I know I sound insane, but I'm showing you this because it's a part of a mistake, as when Mr. Krabs walks into the destruction of the Krusty Krab, he just walks like a normal person when this is not his walking cycle. In every other episode, Mr. Krabs walks like in the clip I just showed you, where his little stubby legs go like pew 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 around. I know me saying that I sound like an insane person, but in this episode, when he walks like that, this is totally a mistake. He's not supposed to walk like that, so yeah. Let's keep it moving though, guys, but first, it's time for the random, random mistake, mistake of the day. Where we take a very quick break from SpongeBob. Don't worry, we're gonna get right back to SpongeBob to talk about a random cartoon recommended by you guys. We're gonna go right back to SpongeBob, don't worry, but today we're gonna do Gravity Falls. We're gonna get right back to SpongeBob, but let's talk about a mistake in a Gravity Falls episode really quickly. The episode is called Double Dipper, and it has to do with the silly spring that the character Mabel, this is Mabel right here, remember, sprays Dipper, this is the character Dipper, with. All right, roll the footage. Does it even work? I think this copier can copy human beings! Do you realize what this means? 
Did you guys catch it? Well, if we pay close attention to the silly string thingy that shoots out of it, it's supposed to come from the nozzle of the bottle, but it just squirts out from below, appearing to just come out of nowhere, making for somewhat of an animation mistake. It seems that animation mistakes are very uncommon in this show, so I probably won't be covering it again. And guys, comment below other cartoons you want me to cover in the random mistake of the day segment. Now let's head back to SpongeBob, baby. Back to SpongeBob we go. This is going to be the best weekend ever. Huh? We've got a very new episode of SpongeBob coming up next. It's Base Word from season 14, which only premiered like two months ago. And we're gonna go right in for it. Here's the first mistake. Just stay away from me. Dit to the O. <laughs> This one's a weird one. Now, it might be due to the animation, like the characters are in motion when this happens, all right? But as you guys just saw, for a brief frame, Incidental Eleven's eyes are either closed or just the same color as her skin, which is totally a mistake. Incidental Eleven is this one right here. I'm zooming in on them. And yeah, they have no eyes. Like I said, their eyes are either closed or the same color as their skin. And this happened during motion. The character was moving. So I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Do you guys think this one was a mistake? I think it was but here's one that was definitely a mistake. Roll the footage. If you're a true SpongeBob fan, you'll catch it right away. This is going to be the best weekend ever. <laughs> Squidward. Bubble Bass. You're going to the Jetsam City Comic Convention too. I am a man of sophistication. I'm going to the Clarinet Convention. So first things first, let's take a look at this PNG of our favorite nerd, Bubble Bass. You know, I like to say that, but I'm a total nerd myself. But anyways, Bubble Bass, remember how he looks? More specifically, remember that he has this fin right here. As when Bubble Bass is seen for the first time in Bass Word, or Bass Word, I actually just realized it's Bass Word, not Bass Word. Look, he's missing that fin. The animators just forgot to draw it. Now, to be fair, for the rest of the episode, he has the fin, as you can see here. But for this one shot, the fin is missing, and boy, oh boy, is that a mistake. Anything at all! Oh, I like a man who begs. See? Told you. The Curse of the Hex is a very interesting episode. I personally really like the plot of this episode, so here's a really quick plot summary, and then we're gonna get right into the mistakes. It's a bit of a spooky episode. This evil girl puts a curse on the Krusty Krab, but anyways, here, here's the first mistake. This one's pretty cursed. Ah, the end of another successful business day. You know, Squidward, this time of day always reminds me of... Money. Krabby Patties cost four fifty these days, lady. Dude, how did this, like, even happen? When Mr. Krabs says, ah, the end of another successful business day at the beginning of the episode, the Galley Grub menu lists a Krabby Patty as a Crab Boy Patty. They misspell it. Crab Boy? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a mistake. And here's another one from The Curse of the Hex. <laughs> This one's more towards the ending of the episode, and we're going to really need to zoom in to highlight this one. But when the customers run out of the Krusty Krab at the end, as I was saying, if we watch Incidental 13 here, they're supposed to run off screen, right? But they actually disappear before running off screen, which is 100% an animation glitch. You can see the layer of him moving was cut off before hitting the side of the screen, and it looks really weird. We're playing it in slow motion, but yeah, this one, you know, it's a very minor detail, no one would notice this, but I definitely did, and it's a mistake. Oh, wait though, I actually found another one from this episode, roll the clip. Old lady, old lady. Here I am. <laughs> Did you guys notice what's missing? Well, normally there's a back door in the Krusty Krab kitchen that leads to the outside, like the back of the restaurant. We've seen it in so many other episodes, but for some reason in The Curse of the Hex, there is just no back door when it should be right here. So yeah, another mistake in this one. And guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. But if you want more SpongeBob mistakes like this, click this video right here. If you do, me and you will share a kelp shake together, all right? We'll turn green out afterwards. You know the reference if you see in the episode, but do it and we'll share one. Click this video.